The point is that just as God provided for the Israelites in the wilderness, amen, God will provide for his people in these last days. And just as angel food or manna was provided daily, God will provide for us in these last days. And the last challenge is, will you put your trust in the God of mammon or will you put your trust in God, Jehovah Jireh, the provider? Right? Are you guys following with me? So just as we talked about this last week, I want to talk to you about this this week. Because the goal is, is that your God is not mammon, but God is your God. Now, how many of you know the Bible says, it doesn't say, I should say, that money is the root of all evil. Did you guys know that the Bible doesn't say that? What does it say? The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. But how many of you know the Bible says that God has stored up the wealth of the wicked and reserved it? Say reserved. For the hands of the righteous. And the Bible says when the righteous prosper, the city will rejoice. So one of the biggest issues is that right now, the biggest tech billionaires, do they worship Jesus? So what happens with the mainstream media and all of the platforms that you use? What is it being fed through those platforms? Hmm? Sin, right? Deception. All kinds of wickedness. Now, we're obviously invading those platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and we're going into these platforms and bringing the gospel, but even so, they're censoring it. Does this make sense? They're censoring it and they're trying to stop what we're doing. But how many of you know if we, being Christians, we owned the greatest social media platform, then ain't nobody going to shut the gospel down. And nobody could censor us. So to say that it is not God's will that we would be the ones who have these ideas is foolishness. As a matter of fact, I've heard it said that the most wealthiest place on the earth is the graveyard. Because everyone's dreams, visions, and God ideas were buried in there. And you know what the devil did? He took a God idea and put it in the hands of the wicked. Because how many of you know that so many Christians have so many ideas, visions, dreams from God, and then they go to the grave with it? And they say, oh, it wasn't God's will. Oh, that's just me. I was dreaming too big. No. God wants you to prosper. God actually will send an angel of provision. Now, everyone in the Bible that had a call from God would have a visitation from an angel. Did you guys already capture that from the last three weeks? Abraham had a visitation from an angel, right? Then you have Isaac, then Jacob. And there was, and let me tell you something about angels. The angel of blessing that came to Abraham, how many of you know Abraham was super wealthy in a desert? Abraham was so wealthy that he gave a bunch of his livestock to Lot and still had way more. And it was the angel of blessing that came to Abraham. And then that same angel of blessing came to Jacob. And then that's uh, uh, Isaac. And then that same angel of blessing came to Jacob. And Jacob wrestled with the angel and said, you're not going anywhere until you what? Bless me. So there's an angel that God releases for blessing. And let me tell you, sometimes you have to wrestle with it. You got this. Now, I want to talk to you about the angel of provision because there's an angel in the treasury of heaven. How many of you know heaven has a treasury? Right? Any, any kingdom has a treasurer. Well, God has a treasury. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm going to go quick because I'm running out of time. But as a matter of fact, the, when Jesus had to pay his taxes, he looks at Peter and says, hey, go cast Go cast the net or go, go, go cast your rod out in the water. When you catch the fish, open its mouth and there'll be a gold coin in there. Say provision. So whenever there's vision, say vision, there's provision. Whenever you have an assignment, say assignment. God provides for the assignment. 
So Jesus made it clear. He says, what son of a kingdom has to pay taxes? He's like, do I have to pay taxes? Jesus, you know, Peter was like, no, no, you don't. He said, but for the sake of what we got to do here on earth, go get me some money out of a fish's mouth, and then I'll go get it. How many of you know there's money in a fish's mouth right now for you? Actually, Isaiah chapter 60 says the abundance of the sea will be given to you. Meaning there's wealth in the sea that's supposed to be given to you. Did you know that the marine kingdom, <laughs> that marine spirits, <laughs> the demonic is trying to own the marine kingdom? Did you know that the kingdom under the waters actually belongs to God? But there's demonic spirits that have gone into the waters to steal your wealth from the sea. This might be too much revelation. It's, it's a little deep. I haven't taught you about the marine kingdom yet. But listen, Isaiah chapter 60 says that the abundance of the sea will be given to you. Meaning that God has abundance in the sea. When Peter was out fishing all day, he got nothing. Jesus said what? Cast a net to the other side. And then guess what happened? All of the fishes began to fill his net. So much so he had to beg for help to be able to bring all the fish into the, into the boat. Meaning God has abundance in the sea. Amen? So I want to help you experience abundance in your life. Because who here believes they have a call from God? Raise your hand. If you're not raising your hand, it's because you don't know that Jesus has a call for your life. If you're in the room, you have a call for your life. So raise your hand. Say, I have a call from God. I am chosen by God. So if you believe that, that means you have an assignment from God. And if God gives you an assignment or a vision, how many of you know he's not going to give you something and not grant you provision to bring it about? So if God has an assignment for you, if God's calling you to the arts and entertainment industry, how many of you know you don't got to bow down to Satan to get success? You see, the devil, this is the craziest thing. People believe the devil can make you rich, but my Bible says all the gold and silver, all the cattle in a thousand hills belongs to the Lord our God. The devil doesn't own anything. And people think that only the devil makes you wealthy. No, the devil will try to offer you your inheritance too soon. The temptation of the devil. See, when, when, when Satan said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth, how many of you know that already belonged to Jesus? That was already aligned to his calling. That was already his inheritance. So how could the devil give Jesus an inheritance that was already his? By offering it prematurely. Meaning, I'll still give you what's already meant for you. So there's a lot of people in Hollywood. There's a lot of people in the world who actually, they were meant for that their whole life. But they prematurely gave up their souls to the devil to get what was already meant for them prematurely. So they were actually destined for greatness. They were already going to achieve that level of success had they not bowed down to the devil. But because they wanted it prematurely, the Bible says an inheritance obtained too soon is not good for you in the end. You understand? So the lie is that the, only the devil wants to make you prosperous. And you know why God won't, why most people in the church can't prosper? Because they don't believe, number one, that they're supposed to. And secondly, just like the people of Israel, every time they were blessed, they worshiped the blessing more than the blesser. So this is why the temptation is to give it up prematurely. Because what Jesus does in the waiting process of the provision is he develops the character and he develops the person and he develops the motives of your heart. Because the temptation was don't go and get crucified, just take your blessing now. 
But how many of you know that at the end of crucifixion, at the end of suffering, at the end of trials, then you qualify for the blessing in your life? Do you know that? But you know what most Christians do? They give up in the midst of trial. And they try to abort the trial prematurely. They want to get out of the hard circumstance early. Jesus could have literally turned the stone into bread and been like, I'm done fasting. There's nothing wrong with eating bread. There was nothing evil about the temptation. Except that it was to prematurely satisfy himself outside of God. Outside of God's timing and outside of God's purpose. Does this make sense? Are you catching it? Are you guys okay with this? You receiving it? Okay. Good. So how do I know there's a treasury in heaven? Matthew 6, 19 to 22. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up, say store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So your treasure is wherever your heart is. And this is proven. Can I tell you how this is proven? Some people, a lot of people in the church have such a hard time giving. <laughs> is this true? How many of you, whenever it's time for an offering, your heart clenches? <laughs> you start clenching your cheeks up in the seat. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know about that part. <laughs> it's so funny. We, we had Jeremy Nelson here. How many of you enjoyed Jeremy Nelson this last Saturday, right? He has, in, in under two years, they have had, I believe it was 1.4 million souls saved. In just this year, 720,000 souls saved. How many of you know that that costs a lot of money to put together those events? How many of you know flights to those countries cost a lot of money? So you have to, but guess what? Because he has a vision, say vision. Provision followed his vision. And they spent over a million dollars in just the last year to see a harvest of 720,000 souls. Now, can I ask you something? If you had a million dollars, would it have been worth it to give it to him? You're sitting in your couch watching Netflix. What you going to do with a million? You ain't doing nothing with it. But he has a vision for 40 million souls saved. We have a vision to turn Dallas Fort Worth upside down just starting. But we believe that there'll be hubs and apostolic and prophetic training centers all around the U.S. And we have 2,100 orphans and widows that we're feeding every month. Now, see, here's what's crazy. To feed that many people, to give that much, being a ministry that's only one year old, makes no sense. You look at the budget, it makes no sense. You know what's crazy? There's always been provision the moment we made that commitment. And just when we were not about to make it. Yeah, that's how it felt, too, when we weren't about to make it. <laughs> then it came. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love the Lord, man. Isn't that good? But see, people want to be blessed. People want to see financial increase. But what are you doing with what you already have? See, the angel of provision comes when you've already gave an assignment to what you already have. How can I prove it to you? I'm going all over the place and I didn't even go in order of my notes, but it's okay. You guys okay with that? The woman and the widow, right? How many of you know the widow with Elijah? Actually, let me, let me teach this first, okay? Check this out. Just so you can see it, because how many of you know that in the last day, the spirit of Elijah will be sent forth? Okay, so let's read about Elijah real quick, and let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, 
of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Sherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I, will have, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Isn't that powerful? So he has to proclaim a famine. But how many of you know that even in the midst of famine, if you're God's child, you're God's prophet, even in the midst of famine, God will take you to a place where there's provision. So I'm telling you that right now, we've been saying this for months, for over a year, that there's a famine coming. But if you do not make yourself ready, first spiritually, and then secondly, by obeying the instructions of the Lord like Joseph did, right? Because instruction will come through a dream. So I want you to follow the series that the Spirit of God is trying to feed you. See, some, some people don't understand the, the, the way that God's trying to put together pieces for you. Amen? This is why it's so important to take notes. Because God's trying to put together a puzzle piece for you. Amen? We talked about the ministry of angels. Then we talked about dreams and angels and how the, the dreams, the Lord gives instructions by sending an angel in a dream to give you instructions so that you don't get destroyed. So that you don't end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right? And then now I'm telling you about the angel of provision because after the Lord gives you the instruction, even in the time of famine, how many of you know that Joseph was able to store up enough wheat and grain for up to seven years in the time of a famine? And how many of you know that the vision was bigger than Joseph just having a meal to eat? Joseph got to feed every other surrounding nation and became the savior even of his own bloodline and lineage. Did you know that if you don't obey what God is putting in you, the vision, the dream, the business idea that God's giving you, that you would actually, you know that it was meant to save your family? If you don't break through what your parents couldn't break through, because how many of you know, how many of you have parents who only talk about what they would have done? Oh, I would have did this. You know, my dad, when he was my age, he was a millionaire. He was, a, he was about to be a multimillionaire, and then he lost it all because he didn't know the Lord. And then he ended up falling into all kinds of other stuff. And he aborted, he sabotaged the destiny for him. My great-grandfather in Cuba owned he actually owned one of the largest tobacco farms in Cuba. And he would actually feed all of, the, all of the neighborhoods they would take out of his farm and he would give away to the whole neighborhood. But then Fidel Castro came in, communism came in, and when communism came in, they came and they took the whole land. They killed my uncle in the field when he was trying to fight them and they stole everything from us. Well, that curse then followed my dad. He lost the inheritance of blessing that he was supposed to have. But how many of you know that I'm here today to be the bloodline breaker? <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm only using my life as an illustration because there's also, there's not just generational curses. There's generational blessings. How do I know? Because God is the God of what? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And the same angel that blessed Abraham blessed Isaac and then blessed Jacob, and then went to Joseph. Right? So God wants to bless you to be what? A blessing. When God called Abraham, he says, I'm going to bless you, and you will become a blessing to all nations. Well, Joseph, who happens in Hebrew, by the way, Joseph happens to have the name Yeshua. So Joseph was a pre Yeshua, a pre-Jesus, sign and wonder. Joseph was a, a pre-Jesus sign and wonder because he saved all the nations that were surrounding Egypt. You understand? So that was the spiritual inheritance. So God blesses you to be a blessing. Say, 
I get blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you know that in heaven, heaven is not poor? Did you guys know that? Now, if God's will is on earth as it is in heaven, then that means that you'll have provision from heaven, doesn't it? Hallelujah. So I want to read to you really quickly Revelations 21 so you could see it. And I hope I'm doing a good job of teaching this. Verse 9 says, Then one of the seven angels in the seven bowls full of the seven final plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, shining with the glory of God. Say the glory. So it was shining with the glory of God. Its radiance was like the most precious jewel, like a jasper, as clear as crystal. The city had a great and high wall with 12 gates inscribed with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 angels at the gates. There were three gates of the east and the north and on the south and three on the west. The wall of the city of the 12 foundations bearing the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Come on, that's powerful. The angel who spoke with me had a golden measuring rod to measure the city and the gates and the walls. The city lies four squares and its width is the same of the length. And he talks about the measurements. And he measured its walls to be 144 cubits by the human measure the angels was using. The wall was made of jasper and the city itself of what? Pure gold. As pure as glass. The foundation of the cities were adorned with every kind of precious stone. Say every kind. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, chalcedony. Yeah. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, sard sardonyx. The sixth, carnelian. Bear with me. All right. <laughs> Cherosolite, beryl, topaz, chrysoprase, chrysoprase jacinth, and Amethyst, amethyst, amethyst. Thank you, guys. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Say pearls. Where are pearls found? In the ocean, in the sea. Okay. So God owns the wealth all beneath the earth. Every stone, every precious stone underneath the earth, every precious stone underneath the waters, the sea, all of it is made in heaven, and the whole city is made of gold. Isn't that awesome? But I saw no temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it because the glory of God illuminates the city. And the Lamb is its lamp. By its light, the nations will walk and into the kings of the earth will bring their glory. Its gates will never be shut at the end of the day because there will be no night there. And into the city be brought the glory and honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who practices the abomination, but only those whose names. Amen? And I missed it right here. The main street, verse 21, the main street of the city was pure gold. <laughs> Amen. So how many of you know heaven is full of gold, precious stones, and all of these things? Now, I want to tell you guys why I'm telling you this, because the Lord told me that the angels of provision will begin to start manifesting here. As a matter of fact, some of you don't know that the angel of provision has already manifested here. And we've had plenty of people who have testified supernatural deposits in their bank account. We have plenty of people who have testified credit, can uh, credit debt cancellations, student loan cancellations, and all of these things. Why? Because if God wants you to go somewhere, he doesn't want you to be a, a slave to the lender. Did you guys know this? The Bible says he actually doesn't want you to be a slave to the lender. So how many of you know, how many of you feel like you can't do something because of a debt that you have? Financially. You know that it's not God's will for you to be in debt. So then you might say, well, why am I? Well, that, answer, that asks a lot more questions, number one, about you. Why are you not budgeting? <laughs> but you don't budget from a place of lack. That's the other thing. You have to budget from a place of faith. But faith isn't spending carelessly. You have to have an assignment for your finances. You understand? Can I give you an example? 
when my wife and I sold everything that we, you know, we left everything that we had. We didn't even get to sell it yet. We left everything we had in, in Texas, in, in Philly. We came here. We ended up, <laughs> we ended up paying for a hotel three times more or two times more than what our mortgage was. We had no job. So what we had to do is we actually, I wouldn't advise this. We had to do it. We had to live on it by a credit card. But we told the Lord, I said, listen, this is your will. This is your bill. So we said, you have to pay off these credit cards so that we can do this. And can you believe that when we would be down to the last day, we would get a phone call and someone would say, hey, my daughter, for whatever reason, I was talking to her and I had told, because we had like ministered to people, right? And how many of you know, see, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have all this at that time, right? We had nothing, literally. I didn't have a YouTube channel. I was just winning souls out in the street daily. Say daily. I was in the harvest field daily. Say daily. I was daily just already obeying what he said. I didn't know why we came to Dallas. I was just doing whatever I was already supposed to be doing anyways. So we ran into some people. We saw them healed. We saw them delivered. We led them to Christ and all this stuff. And apparently the mother was telling her daughter about how we prayed for her and she got healed. How many of you know that money is in the fish's mouth? Well, this was a soul, a fish, <laughs> that we had healed, that the Lord had used us to heal. And she was telling her daughter about the testimony. The daughter, not knowing us, not even really being a believer, felt in her heart to write us a check. And said, I feel like I have to send the money. Do you have their number? She happened to have my wife's number. And right when we were literally down to our last dollar and the bills were due, we get a phone call and they write us a check for $500, which was exactly what we needed. But when you are in the work of God, there will always be provision. But you have to have vision for where the provision will come. Does this make sense? If you don't have a vision or a purpose for money to come, then the money won't come. Like I said, if all you're doing is sitting home and doing nothing and there's no assignment to your finances, then the money won't have an assignment. Unless, say unless. Unless you give it assignment. So here's something I was talking to some of our people uh, last night because they were, we were talking about breaking the mindset of poverty. And one of the things that I was telling them is, is this. If you earn to live, that's all you'll ever have. Did you get it? If all you're looking to do is earn to live, that's all you'll ever get. Meaning, how many of you know we're survival creatures? If I just need to live off of $3,000 a month, how many of you know you'll live off of that $3,000 a month? But if you have vision for something bigger and, and, and you make that your standard, you'll actually push towards that. Does this make sense? Now, again, I wasn't supposed to, I'm, I'm not going to give you a kingdom economy teaching yet today. But I do want you to understand how the angels will work with you. If you earn to give, how many of you know your income will increase? Meaning, okay, I need 3000 to live off of. But how many of you know 3000 to live off of isn't enough to give to something? To give to a cause. How am I supposed to feed? Let's say God calls you to feed 800 orphans. How are you supposed to feed 800 orphans if you can only feed yourself with 3000 But God is calling you to do that. God is calling you to build an orphanage. God is calling you to build these things. You can't do it based off of what you earn, right? So you need to say, Lord, I need to earn this much so that I can give this much to your kingdom. And this is how much I have to live off of. So then what you do is you become like one of the parables of the talents, right? You get whatever little you have, or you be like the woman, the Elijah and the widow. You take the little bit of oil you have, and you begin to give it. And how many of you know that the more you do that, suddenly there will never be an, a, a lack. You'll suddenly always have oil. You'll suddenly always have flour. You'll suddenly always have enough to give. And you'll still have enough for yourself. If you have a vision and an assignment, you see, when we said, when my friend Joel Tenney told me he has 2,100 orphans and widows and their biggest donors died of COVID, I said, that's the devil, man. And he called me and they literally had went three days with no food. 
bunch of kids, three days with no food. You know what they have to do to go get food out there? If they leave the orphanage? Little kids, 11-year-old, 8-year-old, have to prostitute themselves to get a piece of this dirty soup, mud soup. And I said, I said, hell no. I said, hell no. I said, listen, I don't care if we lose the building and we got to go to the streets. <laughs> I'm giving to that. But how many of you know, <laughs> yeah, come on. So we began to give to that. And we made sure that they all were fed. And since then, we've seen a ton of kids rescued of prostitution. Right? But see, when you get, and, and here's what's crazy. At that time, that was, a, that was a stretch to say. That would mean I would have to sacrifice what we already have to pay here. You understand? You know what God did? He increased it. He increased our capacity because he, I said, listen, God, this is how much we have to give every month to feed these kids. Your word says that true religion and undefiled is this, caring for the orphan and the widow. I said, there is nothing more right to give to biblically than orphans and widows. If that's the case, then I'm going to prioritize that and then everything else will suddenly be blessed because I'm obeying what you've already said. Do you catch that? <laughs> so people wonder, like, how did we get here in one year? You learn how to be a good steward. You learn how to be a radical giver. And you know what you'll attract? The angels of provision. Because now you have an assignment for your finances. A lot of us, we spend our money just carelessly. You know, God cares about your money. Actually, almost all of the parables, not all of them, but almost all is Jesus explaining kingdom economy. Do you know that? The parable of the talents, that's money. The one buried it because he was afraid. The one went out and multiplied it and doubled it. The other one went out and doubled it. The king comes back because he's saying, what did you do with what I gave you? Did you know that your money is not yours? Like I said, I guess the Lord wants me to take it this way. I had a whole other thing to teach. But I'm going to go with this. Is that okay? You know that there's people in the church who argue about 10%? The tithe? Under the new covenant, and there, there's no mention of the tithe. Did you know that? So technically under the new covenant, because there isn't necessarily the temple and the priesthood, there really is no need for a tithe. But you know what the new covenant actually says? Give it all. <laughs> so people try to use the whole tithe argument to not give at all. When the Bible says give it all. So actually under the New Testament, they gave it all and then shared it amongst the church. So actually 10% is barely scratching the surface. Do you understand this? Some of you aren't getting it. See, I told you, some of you about to get it like, mm. can I tell you the truth? I'm not telling you to tithe to the glory revival. Go tithe wherever the Lord calls you to give. And I'm not even telling you to tithe. I'm just telling you, how do you expect to see increase in your finances if all you do is spend it on yourself? Did you know that poverty is actually selfish? I told you I'm about to hit it. Did you know that poverty is actually selfish? You know why? Because poverty says, I just need enough for me. The widow said, when Elijah, see, Elijah had no, <laughs> Elijah had no chill, man. He didn't, he didn't even consider that there was a famine, that he declared. Technically, she was broke and about to die because of him. <laughs> Do you understand? He proclaimed the famine. He could have technically just called the rain and then had everyone. You know what I'm saying? But he went to this woman and, and, and says, hey, make me, some, uh, make me a piece of cake, you know, and, and whatever. She says, I only have enough for me and my son. We're going to make this and literally die. He said, cool, before you do that, make me some. So she makes him some. And when she makes it for him, he said, then go do this, in which we have it right here, right? P please, uh, verse, 1 Kings 17, verse 10. Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And she was going to get it. He called to her and said, please bring me also a morsel of bread in your hand. 
So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do, not live, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Verse 13, and Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do what you, uh, as you have said, <laughs> but make me a small cake from it first. Say first. And bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. That's crazy. That's in your Bible. And he's a prophet. <laughs> it's funny. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. Anyways, I've already read that. And then let's go to verse 14. For thus says the Lord. Say, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. After you have done this. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord, until the day the Lord sends the rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. Look at that. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Say unlimited supply. Now, the word of the Lord has a time and a season. Notice he said, until the rain comes. Notice that he was fed by the ravens until the Lord sent him another word to go find the, Eli the widow. So wherever the word of the Lord is, say wherever the word of the Lord is, provision is. You can never go wrong obeying God. If God calls you to go somewhere, he'll provide. I remember the Lord. I remember uh, I gave you guys the story when I was in a church service. And I was this, you know, I'm, I'm this young kid, you know, working. I was uh, working full time and going to college full time and having to live on a very tight budget, right? So I would put all my money in envelopes and assign my money to what it's for, right? And I remember I would put my gas money in an envelope and I, that was my budget to have enough gas for Two weeks, right, until my next paycheck. I remember that was all I had left because I had already spent everything else. <laughs> so I was fasting. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I, had, I had already spent a little too much going out to eat. So then I was like, okay, I guess I got to fast now because that's all I got left. I was in the church, and, of course, the pastor preaches on Elijah and the widow when he's about to take offering. And... I had already given my offering from what I already had set apart, you know, my tithe, whatever, right? And I'm there sitting there, and then the Lord said to me, you know, he gives you that look. You ever feel the look of the Lord? Just like, like that? I felt the look of the Lord. And I said, what? And he said, you know, oil, gas money, same thing. <laughs> and I was like, no, Lord. <laughs> And I said, oh, man. And it was, I said, God, it's in my car. He said, you can leave the service and go get it. And I said, God, I'm going to be disruptive in the service. He said, no, you're not. I'm over here arguing with God, right? And I said, okay, Lord, fine. So I, I, get, I get out of the service. I run to my car. I grab it in the dash. And I barely made it in time for the offering to be done, take, you know, being taken. So I give, the, I give all my gas money out. And I literally have nothing. And I only had, an, I had like less than a quarter tank of gas. And that was not enough because it was Sunday. How many of you know you don't get paid till Friday? Okay. And I had to drive very far from work and school because my school was about an hour and 30 minutes away from my job. So I had a very long commute back and forth. So I remember it is now Tuesday or Wednesday, one of those days. And... I'm having to drive to school. And then I'm looking at my thing, and it says, like, 20 miles to empty. I had 20 miles to get to school left. I said, cool. I'm going to arrive to school. I guess I'm sleeping there tonight. <laughs> Do you understand? Say faith. faith. But so I'm, I'm in the car, and I look at that, and I'm listening to worship music. Now, how many of you know you can't listen to worship music and be in unbelief? That's a sin. <laughs> That's false worship, right? So if I'm talking about he's a way maker, <laughs> miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, you better make a way and keep a promise. 
and be a light in this darkness because I'm about to see this drum go to E. You get what I'm saying? So I said, okay. So I started worship. That was when Waymaker was popping back in the day, right? <laughs> and it was on repeat all the time. So it was on repeat. And I started singing, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Right? And so I close, I'm literally, I, I got so caught up in worship, I closed my eyes while I was driving. I closed my eyes. I'm like, thank you, Lord. I was trying not to look, that's why, at the, at the gas. And I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm worshiping, worshiping. Next thing you know, I look back down, right, because I, 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 I looked at it, and it said 25 miles to empty, 40 miles to empty, 60 miles to empty, 100 miles to empty, 120 miles to empty, 200 miles to empty. And I actually ended up with three quarters of a tank full of gas. Say provision. Hallelujah. And I tell you the truth that I cannot find one time where I have outgiven the Lord. I cannot find one time where I have outgiven the Lord. And you know that out of everyone in my family, I was the first one to break the curse of poverty off of my family. I was the first one. I, I, um... Man, Lord, okay, you're taking this. In. I was going to give you like a whole bunch of Bible verses. I was going to give you like 30 Bible verses, seriously. Um, so maybe I'll do a part two of this because I want to give you, but the Spirit's taking me this way. So, um, yeah, because you know God wants you to be the breaker in your family. You know, let the, you know the Lord wants you to be the one that prospers in your bloodline, right? You know the Lord wants to birth your business. God is saying your business will prosper. Your business will come forth. You will have your catering business. You will be overbooked, says the Lord. You will be overbooked, says the Lord. You will be overbooked, says the Lord. <sighs> Man. I want to encourage the body. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I had like 30 scriptures, but I was the first one in my family to break the curse of poverty. You know, I, I told you guys, you know, as a Hispanic, how many of you are Hispanic in the house? How many of you know Hispanics love to cheat the system? They want to live off of food stamps all the time, live off of government money, government cheese, right? You know the Lord doesn't want you living off of government money? Did you know that? And then, you know, I told you guys I, caught, I got myself under a curse when I started... Uh, getting paid to take care of my mom when really I, you know, wasn't just because we could. And I, and I went through literally a year and a half, almost two years where my finances were totally cursed. Because you can't expect God to bless your money if you're going to do illegitimate business with it. You can't expect God to bless your money if you're going to sin with it. Do you understand? So a lot of us we spend our money on alcohol. We've spent our money on drugs. We've spent our money on going out. We've spent our money on, on doing all these other things. And think about it. Cigarettes. $10 a pack. You'll buy three packs a day but can't give an offering to the Lord. And then once you get saved, you're stingy. Are you following can I help? Alcohol. You'll buy bottles of tequila, 200 bucks a bottle, or you'll buy like some crazy liquor. You'll just buy a bunch of bo bottles of, of liquor. You'll be, the, you'll be the one in the club like, it's on me. Then you can't even give to your brother or sister in the body of Christ who's struggling. What happened? You know what happened? You got sober. You need to get drunk in the Holy Spirit. How many of you know when you're drunk on the new wine of heaven... You're like, it's on me, y'all. It's on me. <laughs> and you become generous. You see, this is the issue with the body of Christ is that we live on what we don't have. We tell, all, we say, you know, can I change some words in your mouth? Can I help you? How many of you know that angels hearken to the words? It hearkens to the word of the Lord, but the word in your mouth is life or death, right? Did you know every time you say, I can't afford that? You're cursing yourself. 
if it's the will of God, you can afford anything. You understand? So you need to change your language. If it's the will of God, right? Now, what this means is you need to now know the will of God. God tells you, I want you to go to this nation, or I want you to give to this person and take care of this person. I want you to sow this or sow that. You don't say, I can't afford. You say, Lord, if it's your will, it's your bill. And you know what God does? He opens the doors of heaven and he provides provision. Is this helping? Like I said, I got like 35 scriptures written down. If you want, I'll give them to you if you don't, if you want to test me with the scriptures. I mean, it's all over the Bible. Then you have the house of Obed-Edom. How many of you remember the house of Obed-Edom? Did you know that when, here's the thing about the glory. Can I tell you something about the glory? This is why our emphasis is holiness and taking God serious. Say, take God serious. When they were bringing the glory back, the ark back from uh, the other nations and they were marching with it, the ark was about to tip over and fall and Uzzah got familiar. It said that they had been with the, the ark for some time which means Uzzah actually got familiar with the glory of God. So Uzzah got familiar and thought, well, I mean, I've, I've touched it before. I've, I've been around the camp before. I'm just going to grab it and hold it up. And you know that Uzzah died. Uzzah dropped dead. And it says that David feared because of this. And it says that they took the ark to the house of a Gentile, Obed-Edom, and let the ark stay at the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And it said that, now here, check this out, a Gittite, a Gentile, they pretty much put it in his house because they just saw it killed Uzzah. They was like, if it kills this Gittite, it don't matter. You understand? They were going to let the ark, the glory, kill another man. So they dropped it off at his house. But how many of you know he put the glory at the center of his home? He put the glory at the center of his home. And it says that everything that Uzzah, that, that, uh, that Obed-Edom did prospered for three months. Because it was in his house for three months. Everything was blessed. How many of you know when the glory comes, you're blessed? When the glory comes, you're blessed. You and your house is blessed. But it says, do what? Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added unto you. You have a, a, an assignment from the king. Will the king not provide the provision for the assignment given to you? How many of you are in the Glory Revival University? Raise your hand. How many of you felt like you were not going to be able to afford getting in? And then the Lord provided. Why? Because there's provision for the vision. And how many of you know that because the, God gave me this vision for a school and a clinic, we had no campus for it. In 40 days... Not only did God birth the school, but he gave us over 80 students and already provided a clinic that will now become a miracle healing and deliverance clinic, which is something I had a vision for back when I was in high school. When I was in high school, I would read books from John Alexander Dowie, from John G. Lake, and the healing rooms of John Alexander Dowie and the healing rooms and the miracle clinic from John G. Lake. And I said, one day, God, I will build you a place. I will build a miracle clinic where we will shut down all the hospitals in a region. And the people will know that if someone's dying, take them to that clinic. And I had that vision in high school and I'm living in it now. And we're, we're going to birth it and launch it before the year's over. Say provision for the vision. But you got to be a good steward. Because the angel of provision, listen, there's an angel who literally holds all the treasures in heaven. You know heaven's treasury is loaded? The, 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 the world isn't wealthy. The, the, the sinners are, shouldn't be prospering more than the church. We want to reach a billion souls. I've heard the billion soul harvest prophecy a million times. Well, if we're going to have a billion soul harvest, we need at least $2 billion to fund it. Minimum. And why is it that all these other people in the world get to be the multi-billionaires and then the church is oppressed? You know why? Because if the devil... Because <laughs> you get money in the right hand, person's hands, how many of you know you're going to change the world? Money is not evil. The love of it is. 
I'm not telling you to love money. I'm not telling you to pursue God just to give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. No, 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 no. If you pursue him, it's a guarantee. Say guarantee. It is a guarantee if you focus on him, all these other things are added. Which means if God tells you, hey, I want you to relocate to this place, he'll provide the, the, the means to relocate. And you know what's amazing? You can sometimes tell the Lord, Lord, I, I want to have a place. I told the Lord this. I said, before I, I launch this, God, I want to have a home for me and my wife. Because I need to make sure that my wife is tended to. Because I know the sacrifice it is to do ministry. I know that I'm barely going to be able to be home. I'm barely going to be able to do certain things. And I know that it, it could be exhausting and taxing. I want her to at least have a kitchen she can walk into and say, this is my kitchen and it feels home. I want her to be able to have a bedroom for our daughter, her own bedroom. I want her to be blessed with these things. So that if we're going to be focused on the assignment, that home doesn't become a problem. Now that was a, something in my heart. My desire. And the Bible says, if a man cannot manage his own home, how can he manage the household of God? So I said, Lord, how can I build a house for you and then my house is in shambles? Because we were living in a little apartment, sleeping on an air mattress, because we sacrificed everything we had. <laughs> so I told this to the Lord. The Lord gave me instruction on a, on, on a job to apply for. I go to this job, and it was a sales job for bathroom models, and the Lord told me, by this time, you have to launch the ministry. I said, Lord, that's a little bit of time to, to get, you know, all these things. So I said, okay, how much do I need to get this going? And I told the Lord, I wrote down, this is how much I, this is the kind of place I want to live in. I looked up how much the rents were. I said, this is the kind of car I want to drive because I was driving a beat up 2,005 Honda Pilot with three, almost 300,000 miles on it. I said, Lord, if I'm going to be doing what you tell me to do, I got to be moving a lot. I need, a, I need a nice car. And you know what, Lord? I've always wanted a truck. So I've wrote it down. Right? I wrote it down. This is what I need. This is what I want. This is the kind of house I want. This is the kind of car I want. And I said, and after that, Lord? And he says, with, I said, with that, Lord, everything else for you. My, the rest of the money goes to you. You know what I did? I worked my butt off for one whole month at this new job. And I put my head down, and I worked 12 hours every single day out there knocking on, you know, at this job I didn't need to knock doors, but I was out there hitting appointments, bam, 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 making sure I perfected my craft, making sure I knew the product, making sure I knew the, everything, that when I communicated to customers, I did it effectively. And I knew that every time I went into a house, I said, Lord, the angel of provision goes with me. The, the favor goes with me. Lord, if, if someone else who doesn't know you could be number one in the company, Lord, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm blessed in my going in and I'm blessed in my going out. Every house I go into, I'm blessed. And Lord, even if I don't make the sale, even if the person can't afford it, God, I thank you that I will become a blessing to that house. And I would see so many miracles in every house that I would go to. I would cast demons out of some of the family members. I would have some of them get healed. I'd have a ton of people get saved. And then I would close the deal, praise God. And in one month... As a new rep in the company, I sold $450,000 worth of bathroom models and took home over 30 k in commissions. And you know what that was enough for? That was enough for me to go get this nice truck. That was enough for me to get us a place to stay. And who was here for that September revival? Who was there at the Fort Worth Hub when we first launched it? Who remembers we didn't take any offerings for like a month and a half, almost two months? Because you know what we did? The rest of it, we didn't even buy furniture. We didn't even worry about none of that stuff. We just got the minimal stuff. And I said, the rest of it, God, is going straight into the kingdom. So we, we put in all of the money for that revival. Guess how many people showed up to that revival? Almost 3,000 people showed up to that revival. 350 were baptized. Countless were healed and delivered. If you were at the revival, you know what I'm talking about. But you know how that money came? Because I had a vision for the provision. And then I followed the instructions of the Lord to bring it to pass. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not boasting. I'm not bragging. I'm giving you wisdom. I'm giving you nuggets. Do you understand? 
the poverty spirit will have you be upset with what I'm saying. An abundance mindset says, God, if you can do it with him, you can do it with me. And God will prosper you. Now, I'm not saying that it has to be the same way that it is for me. But I am saying that whatever God has visioned you for, he will provide. And this angel will come and he will provide for you in that assignment. Amen? Who believes that God's going to send an angel of provision for you in your house? Now understand that these things follow if you seek first his kingdom and you're obedient. Say obedience. This obedience will, will, will not allow them to come and do what they're supposed to do. The angel of provision is, is ready. But if you're not a good steward, you know what the scripture says? Even what you don't have will be taken from you and given to someone else. If you're not going to steward it well. So we need the Lord. How many of you know that Solomon asked for wisdom? How many of you know he didn't ask for riches? What did he ask for? And you know what God said to him? Because you asked me for wisdom. Did you know why he asked for wisdom? Did he ask wisdom for himself? He said wisdom so that I could do what? Lead your people. Meaning that God gave him wisdom not even for his own sake. God gave him wisdom for the sake of the people. When I read that, since I was 15 years old and I got saved, I've been asking God for wisdom. And how many of you know he'll give you wisdom beyond your years? So it doesn't matter how old you are. The Bible says, Look, let no man despise your youth. And wisdom is not age. Wisdom is maturity in the spirit. And wisdom is gained by being with the God of the ages. Being with the God of wisdom. When you're with the God of eternity past, you enter into his wisdom. You enter into his realm. You'll actually gain years out of hours. So I'm telling you, seek first the kingdom. But how many of you know the kingdom has a king? Seek the king and his kingdom. And then when, he, when you mature in stature in the realm of the spirit, when you mature in wisdom, he's like, here's a vision. Here's an assignment. I will now give you the instructions. But understand that every promise has a process. The process is to develop the person who can handle the promise. You understand? And then the commissioning will come forth, and then the provision will automatically be there in front of you. And there's angels already there. Amen? Everybody stand for just a moment, because I, I think uh, I'm running out of time, but I believe there's about to be a, a powerful release of something. I didn't preach everything I wanted to preach and all the verses I wanted to cover. But I guess the Holy Spirit wanted me to go a different way. <sighs> I can give a whole teaching on this. I, I can literally do a whole series on kingdom economy and finances and wisdom and stuff like that. Who actually, who wants to hear about that stuff? You know, the Lord told me a while ago, he said the glory revival will have entrepreneurs birthed out of this place. Amen. And it's funny, the Lord had me uh, put my business, and he told me to, to bury it to birth his, what he wanted me to birth with for the kingdom. But then the Lord said to me, he says, then you'll birth many businesses. And I believe the glory of I was going to birth many businesses. But if I don't start preaching about it, this is what the Lord dealt with me. He says, if I don't start preaching about it and giving people keys to kingdom finances, he says, how can I send them? You see what I'm saying? If we don't start teaching you guys about kingdom economy, how will you be blessed in your finances? If I don't teach you the laws and the principles of kingdom blessing and finances, how will you actually receive those things? It's kind of like this. How will they know unless a preacher is sent, right? So I'm going to start setting something up, and I want to actually do something where we do business workshops and things like that. Probably not on Thursdays and Saturdays, but we'll, we'll have... We have that other space at the HQ where the Miracle Clinic is, and we'll start doing workshops and things like that. Amen? Who would like that? Amen. Amen. Because the same way that there's spiritual application, there's also practical application that we need. Does this make sense? But the angels are ready to be released. And, you know, I see the Lord. Um, the Lord was showing me this before. He said there's, there's some people who... Uh, you know, I was talking about myself, how my land was taken. You know, my family's land was taken in Cuba. And, 
you know, the Lord's having to redeem what was stolen. You know, that put a curse in my bloodline. It was a demonic assignment to rob and take from under the rug the blessing that was on my life. And as quickly as they had it is as quickly as it was taken, right? And so it was with my father. My father was a multimillionaire with a restaurant, one of the most successful restaurants in Patterson, New Jersey. And it, he lost the whole thing, you know. And there's some of us here who are receiving the poverty spirit or the poverty mindset that came from our family. And just like there's an angel of blessing that follows Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there's also a spirit of poverty that tries to follow the bloodline too. Amen? But I believe today there's, there's some of you in the room who genuinely took this message. Amen? So if you've genuinely taken this message, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Amen. There's some of you in the room, you're missionaries. You know that you're a missionary. You're called to missions. You're called to nations. And you're worried about, like, how am I supposed to get there? The Lord says that he's already providing for that assignment. He's already, got, he's already brought provision. But you have to write the vision and make it plain. Write it down. Write it down. Tell the Lord how much you need, and he will bring it. The angel will come and bring it. And the Lord says he'll do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask or imagine. My God will supply all your needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father, I send the angel of the Lord right now into their finances. I send the angel of provision into their bloodline right now. I command every spirit of poverty, every curse that came in the bloodline, Every altar that has their money on it, every altar from family members or even people in their bloodline that where they put their money on those altars and cursed them, I uproot it now in the name of Jesus. Every altar raised against them, every altar trying to keep them in poverty, in lack, in debt, I release the angel of provision to break it off of them now. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Yes. 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 We go into the enemy's camp in the realm of the spirit now. I go into the enemy camp for God's people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, some of you, just come to the altar quickly. Come, 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 come. Come, come, because there's angels at the altar. The Lord is saying, for every altar that was raised against you, come to the altar. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will happen quickly because we're running out of time. But I believe if you pull quickly, just be hungry. Pull on the Lord. Pull on the Lord. I'm commissioning angels right now in the name of Jesus. Angels of provision, angels of abundance, angels of prosperity. Father, the things, hey, hey, I cancel every word curse that has told them they can't birth that business. I cancel every person around them that told them they can't afford that. They can't get into that. They can't get into that house. They can't get into that land. They can't get into that nation. Lord, I pray, I pray now, God, that you would baptize your people in, in, in a spirit of revelation so that they would capture what your promises and your blessings are for them, Lord. Not being materialistic, but have an assignment for their finances. Not suffering in poverty anymore. My God, Reboshta. I uproot it out of their bloodline right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I uproot it out of their bloodline right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I uproot it out of the bloodline right now in the name of Jesus. I uproot it. Hey! Hey! I uproot it. I uproot it. I uproot it. I uproot it. I uproot it in Jesus' name. Uproot it in Jesus' name. Uproot it now. I cancel every word curse says I can't. I can't. I don't have. I don't have. I can't afford it. I won't have that. That's not for me. God doesn't want that for me. I cancel it now. The Lord says, 
Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name. 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 May there be provision for the vision in your people. May there be provision for the vision in your people. May there never be a shackle of debt, God, that keeps them from their assignment in your kingdom. Hey. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Some of you were destined to prosper. Some of you are destined to prosper. <sighs> Don't listen to the religious spirit that says God doesn't want you to be blessed. Don't listen to the religious spirit that says that God doesn't want you to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed, not for you. It's not even about you. The blessings for your kids. The blessings for your children's children. The blessings so that you can impact souls. The blessing so that you can impact nations. The blessing so that you can build that orphanage God told you to build. The blessing so that you can build that, 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 that place. I see someone with a hair salon. And the Lord is saying that salon's not for you. That salon so that I can win souls in the salon. So as you're doing people's hair, hallelujah, you can release the glory on them. And you can release the anointing on them. And miracles can be their portion. May everything you touch prosper because it is going back to the hands of Jesus. Hey, yes, yes, yes. Never suffer lack. Never suffer lack. Never suffer lack so that you can fulfill the assignment of God. I cancel every demon that has come against your vehicles. Yeah, 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 that has come against your vehicles. Yeah, 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 that has come against your vehicles. 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 Yes, yes, yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I break this thing off of you now. Break in Jesus' name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fire on you now. Everything that came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To take from your purpose. To take from your destiny. I command it out now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. You devil that came to steal. You devil that came to steal. You devil that came to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come out. Come out. Every demon that came to steal. Come out. In Jesus' name. Come off of her. Come off of her. Listen, some of you had... Some of you, there's been abuse and trauma that has actually kept you stuck. That is the reason you have fear to make moves in your life. Because of abuses and traumas. Hey, and the Lord is actually delivering you now. The Lord is delivering you now. Someone right now, I just heard, you lost a, a, a big career job or career opportunity. Or you didn't go into it because in that time, it was like, a spirit of insanity or this mental instability came upon you out of nowhere. The Lord is delivering you right now. Someone you lost a, a, a high position in your career because of this mental instability that came upon you. So you didn't go towards it. The Lord is setting you free now. Is this making sense to anybody right now? Is this making sense to you, sort of? Does this make sense to anyone like super clearly? I had a store ownership, but when I got let go, I lost that. Okay. Store ownership. Okay, lift your hands to the Lord. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This makes sense for you. Okay, I, I had a feeling it was for you. Okay, it, it could be for you too. You can take it. You had a high position. And it was mental instability that took you out of it. Is that true? Ten years ago, 12 years ago, I was on top of corporate America globally. And a man pursued me and wooed me. And I left my job to be a wife. He was cheating all the time. And the, the marriage didn't last. The wedding never took place. But I left my career because I wanted a family. I wanted a partner. And ever since, for 10 years, I've been turning away 
from money and from success in this world to see if maybe I'll just be loved for me and not what I can do for the people that come around me. Oh man, God loves you so much, Karen. You're more than enough for the King of glory. So Father, I just thank you right now that everything the devil stole from her, down to relationships, down to provision, down to her career, down to all of these things, God, I thank you that she is loved by the most wonderful God and King and Savior. Father, I thank you. You set her free now. You set her free. Everything that was stolen from you is coming back to you, says the Lord. Pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing because you gave it up. She's getting married to Jesus right now. In the <laughs> Woo! Isn't God wonderful? Isn't God wonderful? Be free. Be free. Hallelujah. Be free in Jesus' name. Hey, may everything, everything that is causing cycles of lack, everything connected to your money, connected to other altars, the Lord reverses it now. May you experience abundance and provision. Yay! El Espíritu Santo te dice, como la, la señora tenía pan para dar. El Espíritu dice, da tu pan. Give your bread. Give your bread. Give your bread. Give your bread. And the Lord is saying, you'll never ever run out of bread. You'll never ever see your fridge empty because your fridge is filled to feed bellies. The Lord has given you a love for to fulfilling bellies, my God. Y el Espíritu te dice que tú vas a ir a otras naciones también. Tú vas a ir a las naciones. You're going to go to nations, says the Lord. You're going to go to nations and you're going to serve your food in the nations. Guys, she's going to serve food in the nations. Did you know that? We release you to serve food in the nations in Jesus' name. Hey, come on. Isn't God wonderful? Isn't God wonderful? Someone here, you've identified clinically with some type of mental illness and because of this you won't get a job who is this clinically you identify with a mental illness and because of this you're you're either lost a job or afraid to get a job anyone bipolar taking pills anything of the like is this anyone in the room come on don't be afraid to answer if it's you god reveals it to heal it amen it's no shame in that all right, I'm going to go once, twice, three times, and then don't come to me at the end of service. I will not prophesy or minister to you if you don't answer when the word is given. Is, is, is that you, sister? Somebody you know? Oh, it's you. Come, come, come. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you got to be a little hard. Amen. <laughs> you wasn't sure. Okay, it's okay. So what was it that they, I guess, clinically put you under? OCD. Okay, and because of this, you're afraid to get a job. Or you can't get a job. Okay. Okay, couldn't. Do you want to be free from that? Do you really? Do you really? Do you have dreams, visions, aspirations for the workplace? Are you, are you currently feeling like you can't get anywhere financially because of this? Yeah. You know, God has more for you than, than this. Amen? Now, it, it was a good season, not having to work. But God actually wants more for you. Okay? So that you're not living paycheck to paycheck all the time. Is this making sense to you? God wants to bless you. Okay. So lift your hands to the Lord and just say this. I renounce OCD. I renounce saying I can't get a job. I renounce saying I can't keep a job. Yeah, yeah. What, what other words do you use when you're saying that? Like I can't, I can't, I gotta go to the bathroom, I can't. What, what are the words that you've cursed yourself with? said already okay I'm like a cycle I just do oh uh, repetitive in the morning like I wouldn't be able to be on time to work I wouldn't be able to okay. I renounce 
notes saying these things that I want to not be able to get to work on time, that I will not be able to keep a job because of this. Isn't this awesome that Jesus reveals something like that for somebody? Isn't it amazing that he would reveal that? That's like a very, I've ne like I've never given that word of knowledge before. Someone not able to get a job because they've identified with a clinical illness. So today, you are not OCD, and you will be able to function, and you are able to function. You are able to get a job. You are able to get out of the house on time. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands to the Lord if you believe it. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, every spirit oppressing her, every spirit keeping her in cycles and patterns, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come against you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, when I count to three, this thing leaves you. One, two, three, out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that if you reveal it, you heal it. And I thank you that you would restore her and that she would know that is not her portion. That is not your portion in Jesus' name. Everybody lift your hands to the Lord. Amen. I believe the Lord is doing something powerful tonight. Some of you, you will see the fruit of this. There's someone in the, in the room. Uh, I, I see, yeah, I mean, this is a un, unique thing. I, I, I want to see who specifically. Let's see if I, yeah. Yes. Show me more, Lord. sister come closer this sister right here this one too come here come here Shh. Shh. hey thank you lord there's someone in the room right now i'm seeing like a negative bank account and like, I don't know if it's negative 20 or something like that. Negative 40. Okay. Well, that's one. Yeah, negative. Okay. But then I'm also seeing amen. Okay, come. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, how many of you know that the church provide, you know, helps each other out, right? Hallelujah. Now, this isn't a let me take advantage thing. No, 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 no. Okay? This is to bless. This is just to locate and bless. Amen? I'm also seeing, yeah, okay. Is there anyone else? Okay, you can stand. Let's let's bless. I'm, I'm, negative twenty precisely. Is that anyone specifically? Negative twenty precisely. Okay. Thank you, Lord. So I'm also seeing this. I'm seeing some of you. Lift your hands if you want this, because I believe it's gonna drop on somebody in this place. Patty, maybe you can help me out. Um, I, I, I don't think we've revisited whatever's going on in your situation. But I see an angel actually providing, like, a place for you. I don't know if this is already done already. No. I see a, a, this is strange. I'm seeing a fridge, and I see, like, an angel giving you a refrigerator. You just got a refrigerator. Okay. 
you just got it like how long ago like a week and a half ago okay wow yeah <laughs> lift your hands to the Lord Patty the Lord's you had a dream last night okay well here's I mean all I'm right now all I'm seeing is I saw an angel giving you a refrigerator a refrigerator I was like that's an interesting sight um, and you know following that I'm seeing just the Lord saying like there's just been like a release of so many angels in your favor and God is saying that there's been so much that was taken from you over and over but it, you also gave it as an offering and the Lord is saying get ready because he's about to open up more th than you could imagine. And, you know, the Lord is actually going to set. I see you. I see your home. And I see every room filled. 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 And then I'm also seeing a, another room being added. And I'm seeing the Lord giving more. And then again. And so the Lord is just going to bless you greatly. Patty, just know that the Lord says, grow weary, don't grow weary in your well-doing. For a due time, you will see a harvest. And the Lord is saying, your harvest is coming. So I want to hear your dream. I want to hear your dream. dream last night. I had a dream last night, and I was like, Lord, what does it mean? But when you were preaching, I knew exactly what it meant. Because it was in the dream, I had all this money, and it was supposed to be for this offering, right? And it actually was given in the offering, but my aunt, Jeannie, stole it all in the dream and I, I'm like what does she represent and so she took it and then you were like Patty I want you to go after that and get the money back so I did I went and I got it and I followed her everywhere to get the money and when I she wouldn't give it up so I, I got the police involved but I was like look I don't want her arrested I just want the money they're like well we can't make her give it to you but then she opened up her pocket and there was like I mean it was a stack of money like this and they were like, just give her the money. And so she did. But when she gave it to me, I went back to go give it to you. And um, when I went, like most of the money was gone. And I was like, well, where'd it go? So I gave you everything that I had recovered. And then I found more. But then I took the keys from her because she had the keys to my car for some reason. And I took the keys from her. And I went, you know, and tried to go, and then, but then I woke up, so I never, but I knew, I was like, that's such a weird dream. And I was like, and I knew it had to do with something, but I have no idea what, and I was asking the Lord, but I said, Lord, if it means something and you want to do something, then have him call me out, because I need to know what this dream meant. Come on, isn't that amazing? We talk about angels and dreams, and now an angel of provision, and you had a dream last night, and it had to do with money. Come on, don't y'all see this, you can't make that stuff up. Come close, Patty. We're going to pray for you. So in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I thank you right now. I come against every spirit that's trying to steal. Mm. God, I thank you that as she worships, you set an ambush against her enemies in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that the place where the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy, Father, that he will not even come near her dwelling. I put an angel, I assign an angel of the Lord to guard her finances. And I assign the angel of the Lord of provision right now to come and bring the abundance to her storehouse. The Lord says an abundance in your storehouse, 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 in your house there shall be an abundance and the Lord actually I'm seeing your house now and I'm seeing rain falling in the house raindrops in the house the Lord is saying watch as the dew of heaven the dew of the morning the Lord is saying the dew in the morning the dew in the morning the dew in the morning the Lord is saying as you meet with him <laughs> you know the Lord's actually giving you strength again for the morning <laughs> the Lord says as you meet with him in the morning the dew of the morning will provide the rain to your seed and you will see it begin to sprout declares the Lord in Jesus mighty name <laughs> we release it in Jesus name say amen amen God poof. hey shay break off that spirit of poverty off of her right now break off the spirit of poverty fire ribashta come off of her in Jesus name come off of her in Jesus name come off of her in Jesus name come on somebody shout amen, amen. 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 
Well, listen, I want to I wanna release a, a, a blessing to all of you. Oh, Brother Eli. Yeah, yeah, we're going to bless Brother Eli and uh, Karen and John and Lee, right? So you, you, guys, uh, you guys are students of the Glory Revival. So I'll, I'll reach out to you guys directly. The Lord, I'm going to reach out to you guys directly, and I'm going to bless the three of you, okay? So, Father, I just thank you for John Lee, Lord. I thank you that she's living by faith, Lord. So, Father, I thank you that your provision would come to her in Jesus' name. Your provision would come to her in Jesus' name. I pray for the spirit of wisdom over you now, that you would be able to have the gift of stewardship. And that, Lord, that you would also bless her, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And God, I thank you for Karen in Jesus' name. We bless her, and I bless Eli in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll reach out to you guys personally afterwards, okay? Since you're students, I have, I have contact with you guys. Amen. How many of you were blessed tonight? Amen. Well, listen. You know, I preached all this, and I didn't take time to, to take an offering. But I trust that you guys, we don't have to take an offering for you to give. Is that right? If you guys truly believe in this principle, if you believe that the Lord's going to give this angel to you and provision, then like the widow, bring your oil to the Lord. Amen. Give him the first of your cake and, your, and all of that. Does that make sense? Amen. So how many of you have cell phones and have a way to give digitally? Raise your hand. Okay. So I'll release you with this. You can go to thegloryrevival.com. You can give, and I know your seed would already be blessed. Amen. But we ran out of time tonight, and I didn't preach all this because I wanted to take an offering. But I also don't want to rob you of the opportunity to do it. Amen. I bless you in Jesus' name. Sow your seed. And then God bless you. As you leave, uh, try to clear the building as fast as possible because we do rent this space, and we technically were supposed to be done 20 minutes ago. Amen. <laughs> God bless you guys. If you want to give cash, our sister Fatima will bring the, the bucket to the front. I love all of you. Let me talk to the viewers online for just a moment. Switch to the viewers online. Give me this camera. Don't leave guys online. I want to talk to you. Hey, listen, I hope you were blessed by this today. I believe that there's angels of provision. Listen, there's some of you watching online. The Lord's whispered in my ear. And he says, there's someone watching online. They're wishing they can come to this revival. They're wishing they can come to Dallas. And the Lord told me to tell you, don't worry. Because I see an angel of the Lord coming with a supernatural deposit into your account. And God is saying that as you start planning ahead to come... The Lord says the closer you get to that time, that you will see a deposit in your account. God's going to bless you. Somebody you're watching, you really were just talking to the Lord. You said, I really want to go to the Glory Revive. I want to go to Dallas. But God, I don't have the money. I don't have the way. I don't have the means. The Lord told me to tell you. He heard your prayer. And he says, don't say I don't. Say I will in Jesus' name. Because God is saying that there's provision coming to you. And you will make it here. There's someone else the Lord told you to relocate to Dallas. And the Lord is saying, if I've already told you, will I not provide the means? And God is going to provide the means at the right time. Some of you, the Lord is showing me that you, you were praying about this. You said, when God, when God, when God. And I saw the month of January. And, I, I, and, and again, this is a confirmation to the person that I'm talking to. Uh, again, there's hundreds of you watching. But I know that there's someone specifically this is for you. I want you to comment below and tell me that word was for me and, and give me details exactly how this word relates to you. All right. So as you close the stream, we're going to end the stream, but don't leave yet. Leave a comment below. I want to hear what you received from today, how you were impacted. And also I want to hear uh, if this word was for you. It'll help us know that this word was for you and we could pray for you. Amen. God bless you guys in Jesus' name. See you, uh, see you Saturday. See you Saturday night. God bless you all.